Well, let's open up our Thrifty Sorter box and see what comes in the kit. We've included an absolute encoder, an X contact bearing, a small bearing kit, bolts kit, gear kit, a wheel, shafts and spacers kit, and a structural plates and forks kit. All of these parts combined will make one Thrifty Swerve module. First, we're going to take the three and a half by three inch X contact bearing and press it into the plate. It should go in with uh, two fingers pressing firmly. Sometimes you have to press around the edges to get it to snap into place. The bearing should sit flush when you look at it from the side of the plate. Next, we'll take our six 1032 quarter inch long button head bolts and thread those in. You'll want to use some thread locker as you start to put these in to make sure they don't back out. Now let's attach the large bevel gear to the wheel. Line up the hole pattern and use two fingers to snap it on. Take your 832 inch long bolts and start to put them in in a triangle pattern and hand tighten them. I tighten these in a triangle pattern, kind of going diagonally from one to the next, just to ensure that everything is tightening up smoothly and things aren't getting cross threaded. Thrifty Swerve has two gear options for the small bevel shaft, a 16 tooth gear and an 18 tooth gear. So you'll need to decide now which one of those you want to install depending on the ratio you're wanting to use. For this example, we'll go with the 18 tooth gear. We'll start by taking the 6801 bearing and putting that into our azimuth gear. Then take the bevel gear shaft and place that through the bearing. Next, take your 3 8 hex bore gear and place that onto the shaft. Lastly, take the E-clip and slip it into the groove on the bevel gear shaft. You may need to use a pair of pliers to get it to fully seat properly. Now's a great time to press your magnet into your center column shaft. This will be found in your absolute encoder kit. And you'll want to use green Loctite to make sure that magnet doesn't spin on you later. Now we'll take our two 6802 bearings and press those into the top and the bottom of our double gear. You should be able to do this by hand either with two fingers pressing in or just pushing up against the table. So now we'll take our center shaft and insert it through the double gear. You'll want the end with the triangle shape going to the smaller side of the gear. And it should stick out like this. And then you'll mesh that up with the azimuth gear may take a little bit of trial and error, but you should get it to snap in pretty easily. And then you'll take your half inch long 1032 button head bolt and thread that in. Again, use blue thread locker on this to make sure it doesn't back out later on. Now it's time to press our bearings into the base plate and the top plates. And take the 6700 series bearings and press those in. And take the 6801 bearing and press that into the top plate and the other two 6700 bearings. Now let's take the gear assembly stack and press that into the X contact bearing. It should slide in pretty easily and sit flush on it.
Now I'll slide the small bevel gear onto the bevel gear shaft and put our small bearing on the shaft as well. Now let's take the fork that has the cutout for the bearing and slide it on. Lastly, on this step, take the 1032 one and a quarter inch long bolts and thread those into the fork. You don't want to tighten them up all the way just yet though. Just get them so that they're holding the fork on. Next, we'll push our 3 8 bearings into the wheel itself, one for each side. Then take your shoulder bolt and slide it through the other fork. Basically, you're going to make the assembly of the shoulder bolt going through the fork, through the wheel, and then line that up with the opposite fork. You can start to hand tighten that shoulder bolt to hold it together, and then take your other one and a quarter inch long 1032 bolts and line those up with the threaded holes in the azimuth gear. Again with these you'll want to tighten them up alternating. So tighten up one at a time a little bit, go back and forth and just make sure the wheel is still moving smoothly and the bevel gears are engaged nicely as you go through this process. Now just check your module to make sure everything's rotating smoothly. Your azimuth should be spinning really nicely. Your bevel should be moving without uh, much resistance or friction. Those will wear in a little bit as you run them, but everything should be rotating pretty smoothly at this point. Now let's take our 3 8 hex shafts and place those into the bearings on the base plate. And you'll slide the 12 tooth azimuth gear with the 3 8 hex for on the right shaft as shown in this video. Next you'll take the largest hex spacer in the kit and slide that on the opposite shaft. And I'll take the second longest hex spacer and slide that on the right shaft. Next take one of your spur gears and slide that on the right shaft. It doesn't matter which one, they're both the same tooth count. And take the other spur gear and slide that on the opposite shaft. Lastly, take the only hex spacer that's left and put that on the right shaft as well. Now let's take the top plate and line it up with the gear shafts and your center column shaft. It should snap on pretty easily. Now take the four spacers that are an inch and three quarters long and your bolts that are two and a quarter inches long. Go around the outside of the top plate, sliding them through and threading them into the base plate. Again, I get these finger tight to start and then go back over them with an Allen wrench after the fact. You will want to use blue thread locker on these as well. Next, let's mount the bottom plate. Going to take our two inch long spacers and line those up with the three holes on the corner. And those also thread directly into the base plate. Using your two and a half inch long 1032 socket head bolts. Now is also a great time to install your Absolute Magnetic Encoder. We're showing the ThriftyBot Absolute Magnetic Encoder here, which is included with the kit. But you can use other Absolute Encoders in FRC. There's threaded holes that match up with the CTRE mount pattern. There's also some number 10 holes there as well. We've also included two 8mm flange bearings that press into that top plate 
Uh, those are there to help support the shafts on your motors. Next, we're gonna mount the azimuth motor. In this example, we're using the Neo motor by Rev Robotics, but you could also use the Kraken motor as well. You'll take the motor mount spacer and put the one and a quarter inch 1032 bolts through it. That will kind of hold that spacer on there. It's a one piece spacer, so that's really nice so those don't fall off easily. And just keep in mind to orient the motor in a way that the wires coming off of it aren't going to get caught up on something or damaged later on. Tighten those three bolts up in sequence and make sure your motor is nice and snug. And now use the included aluminum spacer and the 1032 button head bolt to secure your motor against the top bearing. Check and make sure that your azimuth rotates. It should still be pretty smooth, even with a little motor resistance. All right, lastly, we're going to mount our drive motor. In this example, we're using the West Coast Products Kraken X60. We will also have options for this when you go to purchase the module at checkout. So you can use either an 8mm keyed output motor or a Kraken spline motor. And we'll have spacers that work for either of those. So same steps as before. You'll take your three motor mount bolts, put those through the top plate, and then take your one piece motor spacer and slide those onto the number 10 bolts. And again, make sure you're orienting your motor in a way that when you later attach the wires or if you have wires sticking off of it, that it's not going to be going into the swerve module. You want those pointing away from the gears. Go ahead and snug up those bolts and give it a nice spin. Make sure everything's rotating smoothly now that you've mounted your motor. And lastly, place the aluminum spacer and use your 1032 button head bolt to secure the motor to the bearing. Well, congratulations, you have fully assembled your swerve module mechanically. Thank you so much for supporting us and good luck in your competitions this upcoming season.